always worth the chaos. Sixty films in 14 days. It's Cinemas, the San Francisco Latino Film Festival, and it's happening this month. Here with us this morning to tell us all about it are festival organizer Lucio Ramirez and filmmaker Nicole Opper. Welcome to Bay Sunday. Thank you for having us. All right, so you had the tough task of narrowing it down to, to 60 films. Right. What was the selection process like? Well, it's a long process. We have a small um, selection committee, but we open up a call for entries toward the beginning of the year. And Nicole's film was one of the films that was selected uh, from that entry process. But it's, a, it's an arduous process. Yeah. These, uh, these uh, films are a life, live entity and a life on their own. So it's a matter of really um, knowing what to pick and hoping that it's still available by the time the festival comes around in September. Right, I'm sure it was a difficult process. Nicole, tell us about your film. Sure, so my film is called Visitor's Day and it's a feature documentary that follows a 16-year-old boy named Juan Carlos as he, after being a runaway and living on the streets of Mexico City for a while, he finds his way to a group home where he creates a family with the 72 other boys who live there. We have a clip uh, from this film. Let's take a look and talk more about it right afterwards. Pueden sacar el chavo de la calle, pero no pueden sacar la calle del chavo. En área uno, que se mean. En área dos, que son rateros. En área tres, más o menos. En área cuatro, que sí se puran bien. Cada chavo tiene así un trabajo. Cocina, carpintería, cabras. Esa es la que sería. Con agua tibia se baña. Con agua caliente. Todas con agua caliente. So Nicole, we we're seeing this clip right here. Tell us what's happening with these boys down there. Well, they're all going through uh, a process of counseling and kind of coming to grips with the story of their past with um, really competent uh, counselors, psychiatrists, and educators who live on the site with them at this home, which is called Ipoderac, and it's just outside of Puebla. Mm -hmm. um, and the one other thing that you'll see in the trailer is there's a quesería right there on the site, on the property of this home, where they're making cheese. It's a small cheese factory, and that makes this home entirely self-sustainable. They sell that goat's cheese all across the country, and the boys are really involved doing after-school chores, feeding the goats. Right. And the boy that you focus on is 17 years old. How long has he been without a family? And are there a lot of boys like that uh, in this film? So he became homeless at nine years old and was living on the streets for up until he was 14. Uh, and that's when he moved into the group home with all of these other boys. And that is a pretty common story that you'll find. Mm -hmm. at and, and why was this film selected? A couple of reasons. The quality of the film is amazing, and the story in itself. I think it's one of those stories that help that resonates, and uh, and, it, and it helps to know that it was a Bay Area filmmaker that was involved with it. And again, it underscores how interconnected we are with our next door neighbors in Mexico. That a lot of people are creative uh, in Mexico, uh, that are local, and uh, and and. What we're trying to do with the film festival is for these exchanges to happen, uh, even if it's uh, in the form of a film format. Mm -hmm. Nicole, how long did it take you to film this documentary? And during that course, did you see some of the changes, positive or negative, amongst the boys that you were, you were filming and interviewing? Sure. I filmed every single day for about a year. Almost, actually, exactly for a year. Yeah, and then we took a couple of years to edit the film. So I was really able to see a transformation take place with the main characters of this film. We follow Juan Carlos, but you also meet several other boys who are part of his life as well. And did you get a sense of, of how prevalent that problem is with, with kids growing up without parents in Mexico or in that town itself? Well, there are over two million niños de la calle, kids living on the streets in Mexico, so it, it's very much a prevalent problem. There are other homes who address this issue throughout the country, but Ipoderac really stands up as a model and uh, one to look towards for guidance about how to do this well. And talking about the film festival itself, 
a lot of other films featured this year. What are some other highlights? Right. Well, we're opening up with a, a, a co-production U.S.-Mexico called Ruta Madre. It was uh, made in San Diego and Baja California. Uh, that's an opener. It's really unique. It's a road trip comedy, bilingual, bicultural. Uh, it really kind of underscores, uh, in a way, the audience that we reach. Uh, and a lot of films that are part of the circuit uh, around the world, whether it's uh, political thrillers, uh, some documentaries, and a lot of comedy. Mm -hmm. And as a documentary filmmaker, you have so many different topics. Why focus on this one really quickly as we try to wrap up? Sure. Well, I was really drawn to this story because I have a long history with this home. I'd been a volunteer there myself as a teenager, and they accept volunteers from all over the world. Uh, but it's also connected to what I do thematically, which is tell stories about families built in unconventional ways and through adoption and other ways, which is also what my new project is about. Congratulations on the film, and thank you so much for joining us here this thank morning. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, remember, Cine Mas, the San Francisco Latino Film Festival, happening September 15th through the 30th. For tickets and information, you could go to sflatinofilmfestival.org. We'll be back with more Sunday, Bay Sunday, coming up right after this break. <laughs>